no further ado, let me welcome up this man I enjoy serving with Ananda. Today, today, you will hear what until God spoke to me, I never heard it. And it will bless your heart. And today, is a turning point for your faith. Yes. Come on, declare it. Today, today is a turning point, a turning point for, my faith. for my faith. Come on, say this. My walk with God, my walk with God will, never will never be the same after today. I'm a doer of the word and not a hearer only. And because I do what I hear today, my life will never be the same. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11 verses 1 through 6 will you stand for these brief few verses being read in the initial reading <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 11 I did not get my scripture in to my secretary, so it's not going to be on your screen, but it's still in your Bible. <laughs> Hebrews 11, 1 through 6. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and through it he being dead still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Together, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Again, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Lord, we your soldiers await your word that we might run with it. Be glorified in how we run with this word from this day in Jesus name. Amen. You can be seated.
One of my favorite passages is this one, and one of my favorite verses is Hebrews 11, 6. The Lord has added understanding to this verse that I have quoted and thought much of for much of my Christian life. In verse 6, when the Lord says, <clears throat> without faith it is impossible to please him. Until he enlarged my understanding, I thought it primarily meant just without faith in possession without having faith it's impossible to please him that is a part of the truth of that verse it is we cannot please the Lord without having faith but when the Lord says without faith it's impossible to please him please understand that he's speaking both of faith's presence and faith's operation. Without having and using faith. Without having faith is impossible to please him. Without having faith and using it. It is impossible to please him. There are three questions this morning. In these next few minutes, I want to answer from the word. And the third question is the one I want you to stick a pen in because you're familiar with the first two. But the last one, I did not know until very recently. And I want you to have the answer. And I want you to run with me in that answer. Because the blessing of the Lord is in it. So first, I want you to briefly think with me in the scripture about what faith is. Then I want you to think with me about how faith comes. And then here's the question I want you to run with. And really, because you're familiar with the first, if you've been walking with the Lord for any length of time, you're familiar with the answers to the first two questions, though we'll review it. But here's the question. Why does faith come? What does it come for? You have it, so what? Why do you have it? Pastor, I heard God. I have faith. Now what? We know that we know that we know the answer to the first question. What is faith? Faith in verse one is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You read it out of amplified. Faith is the is the confirmation, the title deed of the things hoped for, being the evidence of things we do not see, and the conviction of their reality. Faith perceiving as real fact what has not yet been revealed to the senses. If I was going to give my definition of faith, faith would simply be an awareness of the whole picture. Because in any given situation, most of the reality we do not see. God brings some of the reality we don't see into manifestation through faith. So, we understand something of what faith is. How do we 
receive faith? How do we get it? How does faith, how does faith come? You know, from Romans 10, 17, the answer to that question. So faith comes by hearing. Okay. Now, I want you to make note of this. When Romans 10, 17 says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That translation there could be more accurately stated this way. Faith comes by hearing a word. The definite article in the Greek language is not there in Romans 10, 17. So if you read that at a surface level, you could think that the only way to hear faith or the only way for faith to come is for you to be sitting in the service hearing the word preached or taught. Now, faith does come that way. But faith can come with you sitting at the kitchen table in conversation, talking to one another and just hearing about the goodness of God and faith can come. Faith can come with you hearing somebody else's testimony. Yes. Come on now. Which is why it's good when you have a blessing from the Lord to let somebody know. The woman with the issue of blood did not get faith from a service. In Mark 5, she heard people talking about what the Lord had done for them and having the results of his healing virtue and power. And the scripture says when she heard about Jesus. Now, I posted this on Facebook recently, and I want to share it with you because I want you to be blessed by it. Whenever you hear anybody's testimony, that testimony is an outcome of something like what you can have. That's true. That's right. That's very true. God doesn't want you to listen to testimonies like I mistakenly used to listen to them at one time wishing I was the person giving the testimony and having the outcome. He said, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't have you to hear the testimony just so you can wish you were that person. I wanted you to hear the testimony so you can understand there's enough in this for you to get an outcome like that. The woman in Mark 5, where he was hearing people talk about what the Lord had done for them. So she made a prayer mind that he will do something for me. So faith comes by hearing the word, a word, a testimony. Which is why the Lord said, be careful what you hear. Because you can pick up faith from a lot of places. If you just listen. <laughs> I was praising the Lord for faith and the faith walk. Because faith is so important. This is how the just live. This is how we live our lives. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's that important. It's so important. It's the way we live. The just. Those who have been made right with God shall live by faith. For we walk, 2 Corinthians, we walk by faith and not by sight. 
But God adjusted me. God helped me. God enlarged my understanding. By asking me first, you understand something about how faith comes. Do you know why it comes? Why does faith come? <laughs> and so I knew I had to answer because he said it right here in Hebrews 11. So you could be pleased. <laughs> For without faith it's impossible to please you. That's part of it. But I'm going to answer it. I want to answer the question by you, by you looking at the scripture with me. Because, because faith ultimately comes. And God is ultimately pleased. When you and I live in the purpose for its coming. Faith doesn't come just so we can have it. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. I want you to look with me in a couple of passages that answers why faith comes. Look at Matthew chapter 17. In Matthew chapter 17, Jesus is speaking and he is explaining to his disciples why they had a faith failure. And they came to him in verse 19 in their failure to deliver this young child from demonic Oppression, it says in verse 19, then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, why could we not cast it out? So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for surely I say to you, if you have faith, what? As a mustard seed. A mustard seed. The Lord used mustard, the mustard seed often as a faith analogy and he said in one place the mustard seed is the smallest of seeds but when it's planted it becomes one of the largest of plants and he says faith is like a mustard seed faith is like a mustard seed please keep that in mind, faith is like a mustard seed. If you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say. Now, why would he go from talking about faith like a seed to speaking? The mustard seed does not grow until it's planted. That's right. That's right. That's right. He says, if you have faith as a mustard seed, plant it. Mm. Mm. Ah. Come on, <laughs> Don't just hold the seed. Mm. Plant it. Mm. Come on now. How do I plant my faith? He just told us. Mm -hmm. If you have faith as a mustard seed, you shall say. Mm -hmm. The speaking is the planting. That's right. That's right. That's right. 
Your faith serves you once it is planted. That's right. It is planted by how you speak. If you have faith as a mustard seed, you shall say. You shall say. You shall say. If you have faith as a mustard seed, you shall say. Mark 11, 22, 23. Have the faith of God. I have faith in God. For whosoever shall say. Listen to me. The reason faith comes to us is so it can go from us. Amen. Faith doesn't come to stay. Faith comes to go. Faith comes with his bags packed. <laughs> it's not trying to be a guest in your house. It's coming so you can send it. We are hearing, this is how faith comes. Faith comes by what? We are hearing so we can speak. The Lord has boldly, the Lord has said, I will not leave you nor forsake you. Well, since he has said that, we may boldly say. Because we heard him speak. Oh God, come on. He didn't say that just for me to feel good. He said it so I could speak it. Faith doesn't come for us to describe the mountain we face. You don't need faith to describe your mountain. You need faith to move it. Notice, notice, let's, let's just, well, let's go, let's look at this and then we go there. He says in verse 20, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, You will say to this mountain, please understand what you don't say to the mountain. If you have faith, you don't say to the mountain, I'm so sick of you being here. <laughs> that doesn't move it. Notice what you don't say if you have faith. I'm so disappointed this mountain is here. I thought it would be gone by now. It's not fair. Listen, one of the main reasons God has us walking by faith on this side is to equal out the unfairness. I heard that. Faith equals out the unfairness. Listen, please understand me. The language of faith is not the language of description. It's the language of direction. If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, what do you say to the mountain? Go. Move. Yes. Excuse me. <laughs> you got to go. <laughs> we 
we are so established in the language of sight and so infrequent in the language of faith that we find ourselves expecting faith based results from sight based speaking oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Jesus didn't say when you get to the mountain go back and pray for God to move it <laughs> <laughs> God, I got this big old brother here, Lord. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? What are you going to do? And he's saying, what are you going to do? That's right. Listen. When faith comes, it comes to go. It comes by hearing. It goes by speaking. We hear so we can speak. We hear one time what we can say a million times. Because faith comes for you to be the echo. For me to be the echo chamber. Huh. So if I have faith. It should come out of my mouth. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm. But, but, Pastor, I know I got faith. I know I got faith, but I'm so concerned. Go back and get some faith. <laughs> because if you have faith, it's not going to be concern coming out of you. I believe, therefore, I speak with the same spirit of faith. Oh, come on now. We believe come on now. and therefore yes. speak. Come on now. Faith comes to change the way I speak. One of the greatest mistakes in the Christian life is to hear from God and then go out and speak like you never Amen. heard. Amen. Amen. I know God said, but no, there's no buts. If God said it, that's the end of the but. No, this is what he said, so this is what I'm saying. We were in prayer a uh, week ago yesterday. And I just started repenting from the Lord. I just started repenting. Oh, I, I saw a whole lot of my Christian life. And I said, Lord, you know what? I said, most of my Christian life there has been this big gap between what you've been saying and what I've been saying. Faith comes to close the gap between us and God. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. Because, because the very essence of faith is what God's already saying. 
faith comes so I can say, ex I can be a perfectly aligned with what I'm hearing. Faith comes so God doesn't have to repeat himself because you're repeating him. That's good. That's real. God. That's real. Faith comes so we can sound like God in the way we talk. Pastor, I'm so concerned about this situation. Okay, okay, did you pray about it? Well, yeah, I'm praying about it right now. Okay, what, what do you hear God saying? God's saying it's going to be all right. Then that's what you should be saying. Amen. <laughs> this is going to be all right. Amen. Because God, didn't, God wasn't telling you it's going to be all right. So you can go back out and say how concerned you are. Because you're listening to your concern instead of the Lord. Oh, come on, come on, you're looking at me like you're right. I passed that. Come on, do you love me? Come on, tell me you love me. Tell me you love me. Faith that never comes out of the mouth is never operational. Come on, come on. Yes, come on, huh? Faith that never changes the way I speak is never operational. Until it affects what I say, it's not operational. Faith is not operational because you say you have it. Faith is operational because of how you use it. I can listen to you on any given subject and know what your faith is. Because if I have faith in the heart, out of the abundance of the heart, Pastor, I really believe, but, but, there's no buts to believe it. That's right. <laughs> Get that butt out of there. <laughs> you all, God is closing the gap between him and us. And he enables us to hear him so there's no space between him and us on any given thing. He says, my word is never idle. If it goes out of my mouth, it's gone out in faith. I never speak just to talk. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. I speak to accomplish. I speak to correct. I speak to change things. I speak to make wrongs right. I speak to get results. So if my word goes out of my mouth, it shall not come back void. It shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing unto where I send it. And you are in my image. And the Lord says, you will have more respect for my word when you learn to respect your own. Mm. 
Oh God, this is, this is good. It may not feel good right now, but it's really good. The man in Matthew 8 who was commended for having great faith he said, I know, Lord, your word has results because my word has results. When I speak, things happen. So I know that when you speak, things happen. My word has authority, so I know your word has authority. We're trying to be excited about how great God's word is without having respect for our own word. What's going out of my mouth? What am I saying? Is what I'm saying consistent with what God is saying? Come on. Come on. Come on. How can two walk together? If I'm walking with God like I say I am, and He's speaking one thing, and I'm saying something else, am I really walking with God? Too often, we're walking with God in our intentions and walking just with our feelings, our thoughts, our expectations, our disappointments in our own speaking. Yeah. I got to say it again. You didn't get it? Too often, we say, okay, Pastor, I know I love the Lord. I know I'm walking with God. Yeah, if you're walking with God, you are talking with God. Come on now. <laughs> well, Pastor, I don't know what he's saying. Well, until you know. Hmm. Because the next best thing mm. to agreeing with what God is saying when I don't know what he's saying. But you don't know how I'm feeling. What I do know is that your feeling is crying for utterance. Mm. Uh, if you don't give it utterance, yeah. it's got to go. But pastor, I'm feeling so concerned. I understand you're feeling so concerned. But if you don't just keep speaking your concern, it will leave you. The multitude of things that come to us in the course of any given day come crying out for the right to stay. And they cannot stay until we give them permission Amen. by the utterance of Amen. our mouths. Amen. Which is why the psalmist said, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in my sight, your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. So, so listen. Faith comes for one reason. One of the reasons. It comes so you can send it. It comes 
so you can release it. It comes so it can go. Because faith doesn't benefit us by just having it. It doesn't bring the benefit to us until it's going from us. Jesus said the mountain moves when you heard and speak to it. It's your word that moves the mountain. It's your word that gets result once you've heard. Uh, I'm going to close with this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let's close with Mark 5. I've been talking to you about this woman and the Holy Spirit will help me to close with her. She illustrates this faith comes to go. Mark 5. Mark 5. Yes, thank you. Mark 5, 25. You got it? Say amen. amen. You want us to wait? Say, would you please say, wait a minute? Then you got it. Mark 5, 25. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years. She suffered many things for many physicians. She had spent all she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. Now her situation was getting bad. It was going downhill. She went to, from doctor to doctor, was going from bad to worse. She spent all she had. She was trying to get better, and she gave it her utmost effort. She spent her money. She just didn't have faith in the Lord doing it. And why do I say she didn't have faith yet? Because she hadn't heard. Faith comes by. It don't come by spending the money. Doesn't come by just things going from bad to worse. Faith comes by hearing. So her life was going downhill. She had spent all she had. Her health had deteriorated. But when she heard, now she didn't hear sermon. She didn't hear message. She wasn't in a service. She wasn't in a synagogue. Come on now. She was out there hearing the testimonies about Jesus from people who had received their healing. And when she heard about the outcomes of other people, she determined from the hearing, I'll have that. I will have that. That's right. <laughs> if you ever hear any testimony like anything you need to hear and want to have, that's for you to say, I'll have that. Amen. I'll have that too. Amen. I'll take that. Amen. Oh yeah, that's for me. Amen. I receive it. I rejoice with you, but I got something coming too out of what you said. And God had you to say that just so I could get ready for what I got coming. Amen. Now, she heard. She heard. The reason the scriptures record things, Romans says, the things that are written beforehand are written for our learning. There are patterns of kingdom operation in the word. This is how it is today. We can have outcomes like this today. She heard about Jesus. Her life has gone downhill for 12 years. Listen, I don't care how long something's been going the wrong way. I don't care how long it's been bad, getting worse. I don't care how long it's been going south when you want to see it go north. I don't care how long things have been rotten, getting more rotten. It doesn't matter. God can change a stuff that's been going on for years in a day. Don't take him long. 
Once divine power is released, it can turn something around in a day. Her life has gone downhill for 12 years. On this day, it turned around. She had a turning point in a day. But now I want you to see what happened. She didn't just hear. Her faith came. She heard. So faith came. But faith comes to go. You go to off. When you go to eat something at the restaurant, are you going to get this to eat it here or to go? <laughs> With faith, as always, to go. <laughs> now you remember it. <laughs> Don't fix no plates. Don't spread no table. I'm not getting this to, to eat it here. I'm getting this. She heard from the time she heard, she started speaking. I want you where it says she said. If you got a Bible, you can mark in. I want you to mark under said. Because the word said there, I'm going to get very technical with you right now. That verb in the Greek language is what's called imperfect, indicative, active, which means intense mood and voice. She started speaking like a scratch record. That's right. That's right. You know what a scratch record does? The ba, the ba, the ba, the ba, the ba, the ba, the ba. Now listen. That tense also indicates from the time she started speaking, yes, she didn't stop until she touched him. Yes, so if she heard on Tuesday and didn't get to Jesus until Thursday, from Tuesday to Thursday, there was one thing coming out of her mouth. As soon as I touch him, I'm going to be made whole. As soon as I put my hands on him, I'm going to be made whole. When my hand touches the hem of his garment, I'm going to be made whole. As soon as the fabric of his garment hits the palm of my hand, I'm going to be made whole. Now listen to me. There's a reason for speaking face language. We hear in words. But we don't think in words. Come on. We think in images. If I said to you when you go out the door today, there's a great Dane dog standing about five feet tall with sharp teeth. He's rabbit. He's foaming at the mouth. You're not thinking about the words great Dane dog foaming. You got a picture. You got an image. You hear what I'm saying? Faith comes to go so an image can be formed. From the time she heard to the time she touched him, she was speaking one thing. And she was seeing one thing. Her health was still bad. Physically, she was still deteriorated. 
the healing wasn't yet in her body, but the promise was in her mouth. Come on, Larry. Come on, Larry. Now, the Lord had me to choose her for a particular reason. She never spoke to anybody else. She didn't try to convince anybody about what was going to happen. She didn't tell her friends. She didn't tell her mama. She didn't tell her daddy. She didn't tell her closest friends. Nobody knew what she was saying but just her and God. Your faith is not for you to try to impress somebody else. They don't need to. They're not the one. Your faith is for you. Because had she told somebody else, when I touch him, I'm going to be made whole. Are you sure? Do you know what you're doing? A lot of people touch him a lot of times, honey. They don't always get that. You don't need somebody else's doubt trying to work with your faith. Got that right. The person who most needs to hear after you and I have heard is only one person. Me. And you know what? When I am speaking consistently enough to myself what needs to be said to me mm -hmm. once I've heard God mm -hmm. if I'm speaking what I've heard enough to myself I don't have room for doubt mm -hmm. doubt has no room to give a voice I'm crowding on everything else except what I heard I'm taking control of my inner dialogue. I'm no longer internally just waiting to hear something. I'm speaking to me what me needs to hear. Yeah, sure is. Boy, I'm telling you, I'm enjoying this. Now, I want you to understand something that I never understood in my life. She never prayed the way we consider prayer. That's right. She never came and said, Jesus, will you help me? She never came and said, uh, I've been having this problem for 12 years. I really need some help. Can you, will you really just touch me? Jairus had come with his daughter in prayer to Jesus. His daughter was 12 years old. She had dealt with her situation for 12 years. Jairus came with conventional prayer. She came speaking. That's good. Yeah. Why did she get ahead of Jairus? <laughs> maybe the faith she was operating mm -hmm. on, maybe her level was one step up from his. That's, uh, That's real good, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I seen yes, sir. Uh, Jairus asked Jesus to come and touch. Yeah. She said, I'm going to go and touch. <laughs> Jairus said, will you touch her? She said, I will touch him. Amen. <laughs> when was the last time you said, I'm going to go pray to the Lord, and when I get done praying, this is all sob. Awesome. Come on. Come 
Come on now. When was the last time you said, God is with me? This is taken care of. I declare this matter is resolved. I know the Lord. The Lord is with me. She never really prayed the way we consider prayer. <laughs> and yet, she stopped the caravan. She stopped everything. Jesus knew he was answering one level of faith and being stopped by another. That's good. Yes, sir. That's really good. And he wouldn't move till he found her. Why would he not move until he found her? And why would he not move until she gave her testimony? He stopped. He wouldn't move. And when she, when she got through with her testimony, he never said to her, well, you could have asked. <laughs> no, he said, your faith. The faith you heard, you put to work. The faith that came to you, you sent it out. Your faith came and go. Your faith came to go because you used it. What does that say to us? It says to me that things are available that you don't have to ask for. If it wasn't available, she couldn't receive it. That's right. That's right. She staked her claim on without even asking for it. I wonder how many things we can stake our claim to. I wonder how many things God's waiting to say your faith has. Why wouldn't Jesus move? He wasn't just thinking about this woman. He was thinking about everybody who would be touched by her testimony. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Because she got faith by hearing. Come on, sir. Others will get faith. A word. Come on, I'm, I'm almost done. Look at, look at 656. Look at, look at Mark 656. This is after this woman's testimony had been given and spread. Jesus goes to another place. Wherever he entered into villages, cities, or the country, they laid the sick in the marketplace. And they begged him that they might just touch the hem of his garment. Where did they get that from? <laughs> now, it's good that he met them at the level of their faith. But from this woman's testimony, they never needed to even beg. 
All they had to do was touch. Touch. <laughs> what happened to her happened to those who also heard about her. Because faith comes by hearing and faith comes to go. Now, from today, and from the time God dealt with my heart, I am more closely monitoring what's coming out of my mouth once I know what God is saying. Once I've heard from him, Once I have faith from what I've heard, my faith comes to go. Faith comes by me hearing. Faith goes by me speaking. And just like I need to hear God to receive faith. There are people and things that need to hear you to receive the impact of your faith which you got from God. Father, I declare in Jesus' name Closing up the gap. I declare no daylight between what you are saying and what we're saying. I declare total alignment between what we have heard and what we are speaking. I declare that the results that have been waiting for us to align with you wait no longer. Stand, will you please?